Hey everyone, I am Christine Gritman and this is Let's Talk About Brand, where guess what we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about personal branding with two of my personal friends, Katie and Mario Marchese. Mario is better known as Mario the Maker Magician. He has been a magician for uh, over 15 years now, and he really kind of breaks the mold. He doesn't do the whole like tuxedo and cape and top hat. He does have a top hat, but it's a little different as we'll talk about. Um, Mario has been called the greatest children's magician in the world by magician David Blaine, who he has also toured the world with. Um, he has taught his own special brand of maker magic to Murray the Muppet on Sesame Street. What? Um, he has also done a whole ton of live programming during this crazy corona season with Make Magazine. He's done stuff with camp stores, but he's normally touring all over the place with his family and his co-adventurer, Katie Marchese. Katie has actually been on my show, my previous show, Social, twice, and she was the most watched episodes by far because Katie, in addition to being Mario's wife and keeping their personal life, you know, going, she also is his manager, his co-adventurer, road trip buddy, and they've got their kids in on the action too. Hashtag it's family business. I love these guys. They're fantastic. I'm so excited to have them on. Oh, and like myself, they are fellow live streamers and users of Ecamm, which is what I use to bring you this show every week, and it's what they use to do their own Mario TV. So you are actually going to have a chance to win a year of Ecamm Pro on this very show. But first, without any further ado, let's bring on our guest stars, Katie and Mario <laughs> Mark speaking. Woo! Oh, Where's the bubbles, Mario? What about the bubbles? Oh yeah, I got bubbles. <laughs> Smoked in the bubbles. <laughs> now it's funny because I was saying before we went live that Katie's been on my show twice, but it was always live and in person because you guys are right here in Nyack. Yes, you're right Not over there. <laughs> But we are, of course, being safe. So, um, so yeah. So we are in our respective homes right now. You are also in your wonderful attic studio. I'm going to show yes. that for a second. Get give people a better view. Yeah, we've been trapped here for about you know six months. <laughs> Ridiculous. But I love that you're in your attic and we're in our yeah. attic and we're literally just a few blocks away and this is awesome. <laughs> Hashtag Nyack Addicts. I love it. And and so you have that awesome set. So you, let's talk for just a quick second about what you do with that set. You broadcast from our live giveaway sponsor, Ecamm, uh, which we are which we are giving away a year of today. This is for oh. Mac only. So sorry, PC users, you can't use it on a Mac. But if you want to win a year of Ecamm Pro, live viewers only, go ahead and pop hashtag Ecamm in the comments. Um, so you are normally touring all over the place. When was the last time you were on tour this year? So we came home from our last tour in March, mm -hmm. three days before everything went down. So, wow. and we saw it coming, like there was the yeah. new news trickling in. It was kind of like following us. We were out in California, drove all the way back to the East Coast. Our last gig was in Baltimore, came home, and literally three days later, our entire calendar was wiped. Oh. And yeah. It was I crazy. I mean, it was our greatest tour that we had. You know, we were on the road for almost three months. And we even bought an Airstream on tour. Like we were, you know. Perfect we, timing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now we look at it in the driveway every morning. Does it have a name? Mario calls it the Bacala, <laughs> which if you have any Italian heritage or Italian friends, you might know what that is. It's like a cod dish. <laughs> I remember one of the names floating around for it was gnocchi. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's I right. That. That was a good one. That like, was a good one. Gnocchi sounds a lot cuter than bacala to me, but I don't know. We're having, <laughs> we call it the like, bacala, you know? It's the bacala. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I love that. I love that you've got the Airstream. It's so, like, it sounds weird, but it's so on brand that you'd be, like, with the Airstream and you have your blue, the little blue bus, your Volkswagen yeah, so. bus that you, like, restored yourself, right? Ah. Yeah, that bus was in a car wreck. The whole front end was destroyed. We got it, you know, at a good price. And, uh... 
And I just re, you know, we took our time, rebuilt it, year and a half, just putting all new interior and uh, exterior paint and all that. And we drove into Colorado on tour. That is we, mind blowing. We broke down five times on tour, <laughs> but it was the greatest tour we ever had. We just the yeah. adventures of just, you know, that desperate panic on the side of a highway, <laughs> getting the wrenches out, figuring out what the problem is. Actually, shout out to the Frischia brothers in Greenwich, Connecticut, because they helped us succeed with that tour. They would literally, I would FaceTime the mechanics and they would listen to the engine and they would diagnose the problems on FaceTime. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah, the Frischia brothers are, are amazing. So awesome. Yeah. I love that. And we, uh, Tim wants to know if you use magic to rebuild it. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a lot easier, I wish, Mario. Man. I mean, I come wish. On. But we had some maker magic. Let's say that I had my maker tools, <laughs> and uh, we problem solved, and we got it working. Sometimes well, just like you know, it, it worked. That brings me to the next point, which is you're not just a magician; you're a maker magician, and that goes also hand in hand with your whole vibe, your whole aesthetic. So some people. Uh, so first of all the traditional image of like a children's magician. I just saw I just saw an insurance commercial the other day <laughs> with someone who was clearly supposed to be the stereotype of the magician. And he had like the tux and the top hat and the cape that was like black with red lining. And you know, that's not you. You have your own aesthetic, which is very, it's it's been described as kind of punk rock or steampunk. You've got a vaudevillian feel. It's like very, it's very you. I want to go way back to like over 15 years ago when you started out being a magician, being a working magician. Uh, was there a time when you sort of like hid the tattoos and like, you know, put on the tux or were you always kind of like, here I am, a Mario? Wow, that's a great question, Christine. I mean, honestly, it was, I definitely hid my tattoos. You know, I definitely wore the stereotypical outfit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was just because, I, it, you know, when something's new, a new field that you go in, you're going to look at what everyone else is doing and you play it as safe as possible to be accepted. And, yeah. and, you, and you try to like, and what happened was it got me to a certain point where I was able to get work and doing okay. But then it plateaued pretty quickly because you're all of a sudden in the norm and what's setting you apart, you know? And, uh, yeah. but it, you know, I call Katie the maker guru of our family yes. because without her, she is like a flame of fire, always pushing me. She's like, what are you doing? Roll your sleeves up. Like, why are you wearing dress pants? You never wear dress pants since I've met you. And like, you know, and, and it was these kind of pushes where like, and my show naturally became better as I took apart this uniform and, you know, and where I'm most comfortable, where I'm most happy, you know? And uh, I think that's with any business, you know? The more you're brutally honest with, you know, who you are, what your strengths and weaknesses are, the more people can relate to you, you know? Oh, I really like that. And that is very, very true. So, uh, so did, so in terms of how it changed your act, how you sort of stopped being in that little box of here's what people expect from a magician. How did it start to change your act and how did they bleed into each other? Yeah, I mean, I, it's almost like I had two lives. I had a robot obsession, building robots and tinkering, and I had the traditional cookie cutter, family magician thing that I do on the weekends. And it, you know, it came from natural criticisms from my audience. You know, they say the audience creates the performer. I would hear some criticism like, oh, that was Mario, he's just doing this and he's just doing that like everyone else. You know, that kind of stuff organically pushed me. And once the robot started mixing, you know, it was it was cool. Like, it, it's a long road, you know? I have a robot here. This is Marcel the monkey. He's, he's the finale Marcel. of my theater show. You know, he's completely 3D printed, autonomous. He's in this six years now. Still the same monkey, just reprogrammed for the new generation of kids. What makes them laugh? What makes them interact? The goal of the show really is the goal of my life. It's just to stay curious, to be inspired, that kids can, you know, it's accessibility, that they see my props, it looks homemade for a reason, you know? And the more I stay true to that, the more we keep uh, afloat on my end, you know? And, and then Katie's the whole other monster of branding and colors and, and what is relevant and showcasing those things. And, and it's been really fun rocking yeah, that out. Fun. I mean, we have, literally figured it out from the ground up together 
and, you know, tried things. Some things didn't work. Some things did. And when something works, you're like, okay, that's a direction you can move in. And then see how far you can push it. And what we've realized is you can really push it as far as you want. Like, there's not really a limit. I lost sound for a second. Uh, hang on just a second. I lost sound, and I would love to hear from our audience if they have also lost sound, because I stopped being able to hear Katie for a second. Say something again? Hmm. I would love to know if someone can pop in the comment thread if they can hear you. They can hear you. All right, so they can hear you. So let me see if I maybe just have to put on, oh, no, but Jen can't hear you. Okay, so people can't hear you. Hmm. Let's try, let's try hanging up on Skype and calling again. Okay. So we're hanging up on Skype and we're going to reconnect to Mario and Katie. And the awesome thing about Mario and Katie that we're going to get to next is how they've sort of figured out how to turn a real person into a brand and make it be real without being... Okay, so we are working out reconnecting with Mario and Katie Marchese. But in the meantime, I really do encourage you to go to um, Mario Magician, MarioTheMagician.com and check out what they are up to. Okay, so here we go. So we're bringing them back in. All right, yay. Okay, they're back and I can hear you. All right. So what I was about to ask is, Katie, as you were saying, you and Mario have absolutely come up with all of this, the branding, the feel, the brand, all of that together. But uh, this, bring, this brings to the question of Mario's a real person, obviously. And you t and so there's, there's Mario the Maker Magician, who's the person on stage, and then there's the real person. And sort of how do you choose which elements to amplify as part of the brand? and which elements to maybe uh, not? Yeah, I mean, as far as what we present on social media, like we've chosen, obviously, a few threads to like allow people to follow. And you know, everybody knows we're a family business. We definitely give glimpses into that, especially when we're traveling. But we're not gonna show like the downside. We're not gonna show the kids tantruming. We're not going to disrespect their personal space. Like. We're very, you know, like you have to be conscious of the fact that they are their own people too. So we we love showing off the maker aspects of anything we do. When our kids do us do something awesome in the maker realm, yeah, we show that off. But uh, and also, you know, we choose a few things. Like the Airstream purchase was a big one that we shared with our viewership. The little blue bus we shared with our viewership. And then Mario, when he, you know, his building process. If we can give glimpses into that. That's always fun too. Like he was working during the pandemic, he did a whole uh, build on a motor, like a street bike type thing. And although that has nothing to do with magic, it definitely fits into the whole narrative of being a maker in every aspect, you know? So we pick things that make sense and that fill in that, that persona for our viewers. I absolutely love that. Someone from Toy Box Theater says, wait, there's a different Mario the Maker Magician? Not really. <laughs> Hey, I love you, Toy Box. <laughs> One of the best. Um, Absolutely. And Cindy says she loves it when she sees Gigi and Bear. I'm also a big fan of Gigi and Bear. We're going to talk more about them in just a second. But go right ahead. You're saying. I mean, Mario, like, that's the thing. He's the same person on stage and off. But, you know, it's like we, we elevate certain aspects yeah. that are going to be more interesting for people to see, you know. But, uh, but that's, I think a lot of people are surprised by that is that he's not a different character, you know? Like he's, you meet him, he's just as energized and exuberant as he is on stage. I'm know? a little crazy, you know. <laughs> That's how I am, I don't know. But no, honestly, you know, people always comment about the energy level and all this stuff. And the truth is, it's when working with kids, it, the audience shapes the performer, like I was yes. saying earlier. Like you have to adapt. 
you either sink or swim, you know, and especially when it comes to your audience base. So what happens is, you know, there's an exaggerated version of what works. And like, and, and expect, you know, people, kids are honest. They tell you the truth. So, oh, that's so true. <laughs> you know, that's what they say. They're easy to entertain. They're hard to fool, you know? And, uh, and, that, and there's a lot of truth in all that. So, so what happens is just like our branding, it's the same with the character. It's like, you listen as much as you can to your audience, whether it is on Instagram, Facebook, whether you're doing a live virtual show, you know, you, you listen and you're sensitive to that and you just constantly kind of be flexible with everything, you know? I love that. So it's not just a feature of here's who I am and here's what I want to put out there. It's also a little bit of seeing what resonates. Definitely. Yeah. Like with our virtual stream with Make Magazine, we like stumbled through you know, just these half hour live streams, half hour live streams. And then what happened was we found a segment where we were interviewing kids and all of a sudden we're getting big feedback. Yeah. For some reason, me interviewing kids is working. So it like is. we shifted everything where a big chunk of that live stream with Ecamm was our interviews with children, you know? And, and so it's, just, it's constantly changing. Yeah, and I think I, like the big thing to keep in mind is like as you're discovering your character, it's better to peel back the things don't that don't feel genuine to you and get to the truth rather than trying on hats of other people yeah. or other characters that are not you. It's like peeling back to find who you really are. You know, that's that's what you have to do. I absolutely love that. So now how would you describe your brand as it currently stands? I mean, I know as an audience member who's also friends with you, like I know how I would describe your brand, but I want to hear from you how you have defined it. Okay, so they did. Mario was on the cover of MUM Magazine, which is an awesome magic industry magazine, and Chloe, who did the piece, the cover article, summed it up perfectly. I love her phrase. I know you used it in one of your tweets. Um, she called him magic's punk rock Peter Pan philosopher, and I love that. I think it's so perfect. <laughs> it really is, and and the maker aesthetic is part of it. I mean, looking at your set right now, right now we have full screen on you guys, and 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 I would just it's so it's such an explosion of you and and I mean I see there there's art there's very clearly handmade art I see a vintage boxing glove back there which goes to the old tiny actually a lot of the props you're looking at some of them are from Bill Irwin's oh, yeah. suitcase Bill oh let's Irwin. talk about Bill yeah he's Miss, he was Mr Noodle on Sesame Street he's one of the you know most famous living clowns alive. Um, uh, but yeah, like so, I have this big magnet here. This is this is Bill Irwin's. You know, I've been using it for my live stream. <laughs> um, I have a robot table, motorized robot table. That is not Bill Irwin's. This is mine. But but everything is different. You know, like all these props, we're utilizing everything we have. You know, we're utilizing all, all kinds of uh, silly gags. You know, like this thing. I don't know what this is. <laughs> 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 but the goal is, I mean, and this is an overall goal with every, like our live show, our online show, it's always to give kids, like, like you don't have to make things super polished and you don't have to buy expensive materials to create art. Like we want to demonstrate that this is all like cardboard, paper, masking tape, duct tape, like it's excessively, you know, created and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like just have fun with it. And this is based on just what my strengths are as a person and as a maker, you know? It's not, we're, you know, like, like I'm terrible, I am not a polished person, you know? <laughs> when I make things, they are naturally like a little off, you know? So, so we're trying to heighten, you know, like the strengths of what make us good and what, you know, what makes us stand out, that's all. I love that so much. And to that end, one of the things that you have done and that you have chosen to embrace as part of your, your brand, as it were, is you have made the choice to show more of your personal life, including your family, including your kids. And Katie, you spoke earlier about how you've also taken their comfort level into account and all of that. But I just want to hear a little bit about, you know, how you draw that line of what from your personal life you do and don't share, how that has evolved, and also a little bit about, you know, what you keep like what do you not share and how do you figure that out yeah i mean for us like right now our kids are getting older they're almost six and almost nine like they're definitely opinionated about what they want presented about themselves they each have their own instagram account now <laughs> so they actually kind of control what comes out as far as what they make what they present 
We have Ultimate Ninja Bear on Instagram and Maker Gigi, and they are both makers in their own right. So we've kind of given them those outlets to share. Um, we monitor everything, but it's all what they want to share and the comments that they want to put out there. And it's been really cool watching them like gain their own little followers. Uh, a lot of other kids who are inspired by what they're doing. So we we're kind of like letting go a little bit and letting them define themselves more as they get older. Um, and then when we're traveling, you know, our our viewpoint has always been like we want to be, we want to show all our cards. Like we're not going to pretend that we can show up at a theater and it's not going to be utter chaos with our kids running around. Like we want everyone to be prepared for what they're getting. This is the full family experience. We show up all together. It's part of our charm, and it's also you know it's part of the crazy that we bring. Um, but. We've met so many other families this way who can relate in some way, whether they're traveling together or just now with the pandemic, like everyone gets the struggle of trying to work while having your kids with you 24 seven. So it's just something that we find like those deeper connections with people because they're they're able to, to kind of grasp onto something that's tangible for them too. I really, really like that. And that's something Marissa said during, uh, during the chat. She said, um, I used to think I had to hide my casual, super nerdy attitude, but now when I get on calls, people love the wall of nerdiness. She has a lot of pop figurines and stuff. She said, I found it attracts the people I'd rather work with anyway. Bring, being yourself works. Um, have you had any, any issues when it comes to people either giving you crap for showing your children or even any like security issues or has it been pretty chill? It's been pretty good. You know, I think... Like every once in a while, people seem a little annoyed. Like you'll get that one, like, you know, stage manager or something who like rolls their eyes a little bit. But you have to look past those things. Like some people are like understand the kid world and we're presenting a family show. Yes, two kids, okay. two families. Right. So it's like, <laughs> who cares? If they don't get it, that's their problem. And, you know, it doesn't bother us. But it's for the most part, people are so welcoming to us. They, they put extra stuff in the green room for the kids. Like it's, it's overall a really positive experience. Oh, I really love that so much. And and Gigi's starting to learn a little magic. <laughs> I saw. Yeah, she was opening up the show a little bit. Yeah, doing some yeah. interactive stuff she, with the audience. She got inspired by Slava's snow show. So yes. we got to see Slava's Ooh. show last year. And, uh, you know, it's like real traditional clowning. It's like the best in the world. And it, she really absorbed it. And it was cool, like, watching her try to find her own character. And now that we're not performing live, she just, I don't know, we got her a kit of like sewing felt plushies. I have been loving her Instagram and the plushies she so In fact, I told Josh that he should do a collab with her because he keeps designing characters and I showed him some of Gigi's maker videos. And I'm like, you know what? You two should like team up. Yeah. It's a great yeah. idea. Cause Did now we're just, yeah. And he's an amazing artist. If you guys don't know about Josh Gritman, oh, oh my he's God. Awesome. He's on Instagram too, although we suck yeah. at updating it. We're so bad with updating it. His artwork is incredible. Yeah. But yeah, and it's really cool, like connecting for her to like watch his page, you know, yeah. it's inspiring to her. I love these little like mini connections they all they'll make at that age. It's, it's oh, I awesome. love it. I just want to, I just want to, since we're coming up on the end of the show soon, I just want to remind people to get in those last entries if they want to win a year of Ecamm Pro, which is how I do my live streams. It's how I do all these fancy scenes. It's how I do, you know, like if I want to do a bicycle horn. <laughs> um, it's how I do all these fun things. And you guys too, you guys have been doing Mario TV, right? Yeah, the Mario show. The Mario show. Sorry. Yeah. We, that was the show that we streamed weekly for Make Magazine. We've had a couple of other pop up. Uh, we did Connecticut Science Center. Uh, that's where What If Kids Rule the World emerged yes. from. Yeah. And it's all streamed through Ecamm. And Ecamm, really I mean, cool. was a game changer for us yeah. because of how easy it is to use, you know? And especially when the pandemic hit, there's no, we don't, I don't know tech, you know, we don't know like this kind of stuff <laughs> where that kind of stuff. So Ecamm came through and we just, once we, it, it took just so so little time, Super easy. and uh, so we love it. So now we're kind of obsessed. <laughs> I love that so much. That is awesome. And Ecam says, "Woo woo!" <laughs> so uh, so yeah. So while people get their last entries in, um, I also want people to get their questions in too. We have one question 
from the Twitter chat from Shruti. She wants to know, how are they truly differentiating themselves in these difficult COVID times? Because, of course, you are normally a touring magician giving a live show, and now you have had to transition. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. You know, like, we were very lucky the first week we got home in March from our two-and-a-half-month tour, we, uh, you know, we got to work with Make Magazine and camp stores, and uh, they gave us kind of this free ground to kind of make mistakes. The first thing I did was try to do my stage show in front of a uh, computer screen, and it bombed. It did not work, you know? So you quickly learn how to, like, how to like connect with kids and families on this new medium, you know? And uh, what's beautiful is that it's totally, not only possible, but it's like, when you start getting in rhythm, it's powerful, you know? Where I was getting to do shows for people in Saudi Arabia, you know, I would never get to do that, you know? Like, where you're seeing all these screens and like, you get the right moderator, we switch them up and we can like see them live. So it's been a fun adventure. I mean, it is sad for like, like Marcel, we're learning how to bring Marcel in in a new way, but it is also this new evolution where I found a whole new show inside of me that I never knew existed, you know? I never knew existed, this whole other show. And uh, so that's something that's been exciting, you know? I love that so much. Um, and, and people are really responding to it. You have a lot of fans in the comments. It's making me really happy. Um, and uh, so Tim wants to know, what's the most difficult trick you've performed? Now, just to tell people a little bit about your act, it's, a, it's, it's very interesting. So from an audience perspective, it's a really fascinating mix of there's a little bit of kind of vaudevillian, like almost like pretending that things got messed up. I know I've been in shows where something actually got messed up, but you can't tell uh -huh. because it's part of because you're very Buster Keaton. You know, you've got that Buster Keaton type of like it's not slapstick, it's choreographed, but it's also got genuineness to it. So there's that, there's that, and then it almost takes you by surprise when it's like you did something totally mind blowing, where it's like, <laughs> wait, how the hell did he do that? And so much of it is with robots and, and stuff that you've made yourself by hand that look very homespun. So just so people have a sense of this act, it's not like, oh, I'm going to saw a lady in half. No, it's, <laughs> it's like cool stuff. But yeah, tell us about, you know, some of the most difficult things to put together. Yeah. To make yeah. happen. People ask me, what do I do for a living? I say I build robots that fall apart on purpose to make kids laugh. That's I love it. Right, and know? it works. <laughs> so like, you know, like the opening of my show, I have, you know, uh, 14 servo motors that reveal banners that fall and like they all look glorious in a moment and then they all start falling apart um, and I just run around <laughs> picking signs up and flags and spring snakes. And like, it's just, you know, it's, it, a kids love seeing an adult make a fool of themselves, you know? <laughs> and I've kind of run with that using tech. And what the big thing is, the big circle of the whole show is not, it's trying to like introduce kids to 3D design, 3D printing and animating what they're making, you know? And there's all this accessible technology now for kids. You can get on tinkercad.com and start 3D designing. You can buy an Arduino kit and learn how to make motors move, you know? Um, you can get a 3D printer for like $200, you yep. know? So it's like, how do I utilize this fascinating technology that's at our fingertips, um, that's accessible, and, and have fun with it, you know? Just have fun, you know? I remember you blew my mind with a drone thing that ah. you did at Roca. That's a new trick. And that was hard to put together. Dangerous and sketchy thing I do. Um, uh, but it is one of my favorites where I have someone in the audience pick any card they want. I throw it in a hat and I have a drone fly throughout the audience. I talk about Nikola Tesla and how um, uh, he invented remote control, you know, and uh, and it's kind of a science lesson. At the end, the drone goes into the hat and pulls out the selected card and it's a beautiful moment. Um, uh, I, I'm not revealing the method yet. No. The magicians. <laughs> wow. No. It's, like, it's a beautiful thing that fits in a little suitcase and I can perform it in front of 3,000 people, you know. it's a. So it's a fun, it's a fun new routine. And I miss that routine. I can't do it now, you know, but Aww. new routines. There's new routines now, yeah. There are. So I want to pull something out of a hat. I want to pull a winner out of a hat right now. We had our winner of Ecamm on the Twitter chat this week. It was Marianne Avery, who actually has won during a previous Twitter chat, too. So Marianne is just racking up the prizes this year, you guys. <laughs> But Marianne is actually not our winner today. Today, our winner of Ecamm is Mike O'Donnell. So congrats to Mike O'Donnell. Mike O'Donnell. Mike O'Donnell. Woo! 
You just won a year of Ecamm Pro, so Mike, get in touch with me, slide into those DMs, and I will make sure to hook you up with a year of Ecamm Pro. Thank you so much to Katie from Ecamm. Um, not this Katie, another Katie, but thank you to this Katie too. Um, so I'm going to ask you both just a final question. I know we're at 1230 here, but a final question for you, which is for someone who is um, trying to figure out their personal brand and they're not show sure how to figure out what parts of themselves to show, what parts to hide, what's professional, all of that stuff. Um, now that you've been at this for over 15 years, you know, how, how would you guide someone who's at the beginning of their personal branding journey? thing that I've realized is to like first of all take the idea of professional and just throw it out the window entirely because I feel like with social media that has really broken all of that down and what people really want to get at is like the truth so explore what aspects of you are interesting you know like what do you love like Mario talks about it all the time like we love you know VWs we love like that rat rod culture we love all of these different things that don't necessarily have to do with what we do but it it like pulls people in from all these different areas of the world who might not have been our audience otherwise but they're like oh that's cool I like vintage VWs too I'm gonna check this guy out whoa his magic is awesome too so like don't don't think just about your one craft or one product or one business that you have but think also about yourself and how can you reach more people? That was beautiful. Thank you so very, very, very much to Katie Marchese and Mario Marchese. Where can they find you? Where should they find you? Um, MarioTheMagician.com is our main hub where you can find all of our social links. There's a link to the MarioShow.tv on there. That's the central place. So go there and find us and follow us everywhere. <laughs> Woo! And you won't regret it. They put on a fantastic show. And when you guys are out touring again, I highly encourage everyone everywhere to get out and see them. You will not regret it. Thanks so much, <laughs> thank Christine. You, thank you so much. And thank you so much to everyone who has joined us here today. Again, I'm Christine Gritman. I do the show every single Friday at noon Eastern where I talk about brand. And I also have a Twitter chat on Tuesdays at noon Eastern on Twitter, obviously. Uh, and that feeds into the Friday show. You may have seen some of the tweets up there and you saw a question from the Twitter chat. So these two really do fit into each other. So next Tuesday, the 29th, our topic is going to be branding and media. So how media and your personal brand can really feed into and strengthen each other. And that will lead into our Friday show, which is with my friend Ashley Graham, aka your brandista. And she runs Brandeso Branding and PR. So please do join me next week. I look forward to seeing you all. Thanks again to my guests, Mario and Katie. And thanks to you. Bye.